Recasting and 3D printing. Two topics that cause untold controversy in the wider Warhammer community. To some, they've become just as, if not more divisive than real world politics. But in this video, I'm finally going to put this debate to bed. Oh, who am I kidding? The debate is going nowhere. But I'm going to take a closer look at the different materials and hopefully help you come to an informed decision on what you include in your armies. I'm Benji and welcome to Benji's Hobbies. In front of me, I have three, well, sort of three miniatures. The first is a genuine Custodes Achilles Dreadnought from Forge World. The second is a Custodes Telnon Dreadnought from a Chinese recaster. And finally, currently in their unassembled state, are two 3D printed Custodes Galatas Dreadnoughts. All biggish models, all comparable in size and shape, and should make for a decent quality comparison. So first up, let's take a look at the genuine Forge World model. Now this is by far the most expensive option, with this model costing me £68 on a recent trip to Warhammer World. Visiting Warhammer World is an experience in itself, and it's something that I'd highly recommend if you can. The museum is an absolute eye-opener, and being able to pick up every current Warhammer model in person from one place is a real treat. But even if you can't pick one up in person, you can still get them ordered from the Forge World website. All models from Forge World are designed by Games Workshop and are made in resin here in the UK. While some people rail against the perceived high price of Games Workshop products, it's sort of justified when you take into consideration the overheads a business like Games Workshop has. Not only are we talking about designing the miniatures in the first place, but also buying in raw materials, manufacturing, packaging, storing, transporting, marketing, and also covering physical store overheads. Also, manufacturing in the UK tends to be more expensive due to having a significantly higher wage than other countries, especially in the Far East. The quality of the cast is really good. There are no missing pieces, mold slips or bubbles, so it needs minimal cleanup. And something else to note, that even if I did have any of these problems, Games Workshop have a pretty good replacement policy. If anything's missing or damaged within reason, they tend to replace it. Thankfully, I had zero issues with this one, other than an accidental slip with my clippers, which was totally my fault. So whilst it's a pretty expensive model, I'm really happy with the built model. Next up, let's take a look at the recast Telemon Dread. The key thing to point out about recasting is it's totally illegal. Whilst you can replicate parts for personal use, it is illegal to sell them. And regardless of your thoughts on Games Workshop, recasting is out and out IP theft, period. There is absolutely no gray area here. Whilst I bought this model as an experiment, it's certainly not something I'm going to be making a habit of. Now, I bought this online from a Chinese recaster, whose name I won't be sharing, and it cost me roughly a third of what a genuine model would have cost me direct from Forge World. It did take well over a month to get to me, so if you're expecting a quick turnaround on your recast order, then you've got another thing coming. In terms of quality, it's acceptable. This is my first experience with recast miniatures, and it's disappointing to see a big mold slip across the chest in such a prominent location. Whilst it's easy enough to deal with by scraping and sanding, it's still not ideal and more work than the Forge World model was. Also, the resin gates are positioned in rather awkward places, which somewhat risks damaging detail. The Forge World model in comparison had the gates connected in spots that would be obscured through assembly, so the connection points were easily hidden. Overall, they just felt better thought out. The resin itself does perhaps feel a little more brittle than the Forge World counterpart. However, this is something that is incredibly difficult to convey on camera. I think you'd only be able to tell by handling the model in person. So how is it that Chinese recasts are so cheap? Well, as I mentioned earlier, Games Workshop have significant overheads when it comes to manufacturing minis, which Chinese recasters just don't have. 
They don't have to do any design work as they are simply casts of the original model. Wages are also significantly lower in China when compared to the UK, with average salaries being almost five times lower, so paying someone to cast in the UK comes with a premium. One other thing to consider is the working conditions within factories. In the UK, we are fortunate to have a whole slew of workers' rights and health and safety legislation. Whilst there are certainly some laws protecting workers in China, they are nowhere as stringent or well regulated, so before buying recast, it might be worth thinking about the human cost. Whilst I have no direct evidence suggesting that recasters don't look after their staff, I would hazard a guess that working conditions are going to be better in a factory in Nottingham than they are in China. Before we move on to look at the 3D prints, let me tell you a little bit about this video sponsor, Artiscapade. Whilst I won't be painting any of these minis in this video, when I do, you can bet I'll be using my set of Artiscapade brushes. I know this is a sponsored video, but their set of Pro Series synthetic brushes has genuinely become a hobby staple for me, and they've had some serious use over the last six months. They're great for laying down base coats and perfect for applying washes, contrast paints and inks. The set of 15 Pro Series detail brushes is excellent value for money, and what's more, if you use the link down below, you get an extra 45% discount on them. Go and check them out, I don't think you'll be disappointed. And finally, on to 3D printing. Now, I am a big fan of 3D printing. I think it has opened up the floor to so many amazing miniature designers who would otherwise have not been able to showcase their talents if minis were made in more conventional materials. It's also led to direct copies of existing miniatures to become available online, which is where 3D printing becomes a little bit more problematic. I'm not an intellectual property lawyer, so I won't delve too much into IP law because, in all honesty, it's way beyond the scope of my knowledge. However, I personally tend to draw the line at direct copies of Games Workshop minis. I am, however, a big fan of works that are inspired by the Warhammer universe and existing models. The models I've printed, which are found on Cults 3D and Thingiverse, are definitely somewhat similar to the other two dreadnoughts that I've built. However, they're not direct replicas of the existing models. They share the same iconography and rough shapes, but they are definitely distinct models from the originals. Now I have no idea whether these models are infringing on any intellectual property, but they're certainly sailing very close to the wind. Price-wise, excluding the cost of the 3D printer and other equipment, these were by far the cheapest option, with each dreadnought costing me less than £3 each to print. To put that into context, I could print 22 dreadnoughts for the price of a single Forge World Dread. That is certainly a lot of dreadnoughts. Looking at the finished models compared to the Forge World and Recast models, they do leave something to be desired though. Whilst 3D printing technology has come a very long way, and there are certainly printers out there that are capable, these models aren't quite there. However, I want to caveat that this is more likely down to the files not being as detailed and refined as they could be, rather than the quality of the printer. In terms of material, the resin that I'm using is standard Elio Grey. Compared to other types of resin, it does tend to be more brittle, and in my rather clumsy experience, dropped models tend to shatter more often than not. So what are my thoughts on the three materials, and where do I think you should be putting your money? Whilst I can certainly see the attraction of buying recasts, I mean, who wouldn't want to buy cheap Warhammer models? To me, the moral and ethical cost of it is just a little too high. I enjoy the games and miniatures that Games Workshop produce, and unless those games are supported, then they don't have a future. I know Games Workshop get a lot of hate for, well, just being Games Workshop, but ultimately IP theft is IP theft, and I know I'd certainly prefer to support a UK-based business employing people in the UK, rather than knockoffs outsourced to a dodgy factory in China. I am generally an advocate of 3D printing. It opens up access to so many miniatures and customization options that would otherwise not be available, but I don't think it's for everyone. 
There are a lot of complexities and frustrations when it comes to 3D printing, and it can definitely become a hobby in itself. There's loads I could say about this, but maybe that's a topic for another video. Ultimately, the choice is yours, which is best for you. Personally, I'll still continue to buy legit models as and when I can afford them, but if I can find the occasional cool 3D printable proxy that isn't a blatant ripoff of genuine models, then you can bet I'll be including them in my armies too. If you want to see what I've got planned for these models, then make sure you click that subscribe button. And if you've enjoyed this video, then go and click that little thumbs up down below. And whilst you're down there, check out my affiliate links, which help fund what I do. And if you really like what I'm doing, please consider signing up to my Patreon. As always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next video.